Hi YouTube. Well, I'm excited to announce that I have my dream of CNC lathe. Now, if I can only get it working. So that's what this video is going to be about. This is a little educational style lathe uh, built off a Bannock design for uh, training students. And uh, I picked it up for, uh, for a pretty low price and now I need to do a little troubleshooting to get it to work. But this thing is really cool and I hope you enjoy this video. Please do me a favor and hit like and subscribe. This is the control panel of the machine. What's described in the manual is that this is to simulate a FANUC control. And that's what this keyboard is. And it has a disc on the side right here. This is the operating system. There's no hard drive in here. So the program to operate it is on a disc. And then there's another one that's a diagnostic disc as well. And so there's the floppy drive on the side of it. And um, this is the startup screen and then it says press F1 to continue, which actually is that button there that says POS. So this is used for homing while it's uh, loading. It put the home switch here and then you can home uh, up and down and X You go up and then you go to the right in Z and then the home buttons light up and uh, spindle control, all of the controls for the machine are right here. And then there's a, a dial that you can use to adjust it to. And so here it's loading and the, you know, basically 1988 to 93, this thing was made in 1994, this particular one, Rhino Robotics. I don't know if they're still around or not. All right, so the program has loaded. So the program is, is running, so if I hit page up or page down, I can get to some different screens on the position page. <clears throat> I'm set to home. I'm going to home Z. It's set to slow down as it approaches the flag. <clears throat> so now the, the Z home light is lit up. So now I have to switch to... Uh, like handle jog and and I know that I'm in Z mode and I want to go negative and it has a sign down there it tells me negative is that way so now I can jog I can jog it away from there and then I'm gonna go back to home and this is where I'm having a problem right now Oh yeah, I just tripped it. I just tripped it. So I got an issue with the x-axis motor that I'm going to have to troubleshoot. I'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. Um, but this is uh, a four-inch. Let's see. This this is a four-inch chuck, three-jaw chuck. It has a, a DC motor with speed control, and and then it has a eight-position pneumatic turret here. and it had a spot for a tailstock which I don't have um, so it's just a two axis lathe and uh, Z is this way and X is this way so my issue is that I'm getting a uh, uh, faults like an overload on the I think this is a servo or maybe it's a stepper I'll find out soon so I'm going to take this apart and stick around before I get to taking it apart I'm going to run the diagnostic disc in here and show you what that can do so I took out the operating system disc and I popped that in <clears throat> And I'll show you that over here on the side, this is the system disc. And then there's actually a five and a quarter floppy. That's a three and a half. And it said in the manual that that's to simulate the separate tape drive these machines used to be. So I'm going to go ahead and power it on right now.
so here we are at that screen again. I got a fail on the, there's a battery on the, <coughs> excuse me, there's a, there's a bad battery on the, the motherboard of this thing. But it's, it's prompting me to uh, F1 to continue or F2 to set up. So F1 is this position button. So I'm going to press that. Now it's running the diagnostic disc. So now it's, it wants the new date. It thinks it's 1980. You can skip that and you just hit this, I guess that stands EOB end of buffer is what my friend told me. He's more of a computer person than I am. So now there's <clears throat> multiple files on this disc. I happen to know what they are. So the one that I want to read is di, uh, it's D-I-A-G. And then you hit end of buffer. And now it's gonna run that program. And bingo, this is it right here. So there's a couple different screens. You can page through like this. Here, lamp test, watch this. It runs all the lights on the machine in sequence to make sure they're working. And you can see it right now. And it just repeats, it just continues and continues. All of the lights. It's like a video game or something. This is straight out of like Revenge of the Nerds. And so, so we're, we're good with that. Let's see, how do I, there I just hit cancel or reset. Okay, I hit reset over here. Um, that also clears alarms. Um, I'm gonna go to, this one is input data display. So what's nice about this is it shows you all of the different functions of the machine and the switches. And there is, let's see how many page, three pages here. And so let's see the first one. So on the page two, you can see that delay the front door. I'm opening and closing that. <coughs> All the limits of the machines. I can't home in X position. So I'm gonna be looking at those limit switches on X. Um, but you just go through all of these different things right here. I'll do the emergency stop switch too. See, I have it pressed right now. Now it's off. On, off. So this is great. I'm going to back up third screen. There's nothing on this one. <clears throat> and so well, let's look at outputs. And here, I don't know what this stuff is yet. I haven't learned how to use it, but actually this thing is set up to integrate with the robot. It has a lot of, on the back side of it, it has a lot of inputs. And I actually have the back panel off right now, but there's a whole series of inputs that connect right here and right here. I mean, outputs, not inputs. And then the bottom is off of it right now too. So I don't have any of those outputs set up, um, but that's what that is. And then let's look at the tool changer diagnostics. I don't know how to use the tool changer, um, but it has a, a ratcheting and okay, so yeah. User one switch controls. Okay. Um, I don't know what that does. Um, disc utilities. I'm gonna. I'm gonna zoom in here. All right, now I'm now I'm zoom now I'm zoomed in on these screens. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back here, the first screen again. Inputs, you can see those different sensors I was talking about, and there's three pages of them here. I've got the lathe front door. You can see it going open and close right now. Is that showing up in the video? Right there. Okay. Um, so that's that. I'm gonna back out of there by hitting reset and then the output display screen. This is everything that's in the output display screen. 
which I don't have set up. And then I'm gonna back out of here with the reset tool changer diagnostics is right here. I don't know what to do with this. Press the reset to return to the main menu. Disk utilities, let's see what's in disk utilities. Copy drive A to B, to B, B to A, that must be the three and a half and the five and a quarter. And we're gonna get out of there. Okay, file utilities, CNC to dock translator, dock to CNC translator. CNC files are used directly by the ST8. Dock files are text files included for convenience. Okay, backing up. And then the lamp test, I already showed you that. So this is the this is the diagnostics screen. Now it's time to take this apart. What I'm gonna do is strip these covers off and get to the motor and see if there's resistance moving up and down. We got a mechanical issue here. That's the first thing. So I'm gonna decouple the motor. Look at this, it even has a little instructions here. Do not use compressed air to clean machine tools. You're getting a lesson in school. So you can see the top of the motor now. It's right here. There's a back cover and the wires go into that. All right, so I'm gonna drive this screw from the top side here. Sorry, this is in the way a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So I'm turning this. So actually this seems like a good way to turn it. So I'm just, I'm gonna do this by hand. I'm not using my air tool because I'm getting a feel for is the play and backlash, I don't even know what the backlash is, but is it getting hard and it, could that be causing the motor to, to fail? Okay, I just bottomed out on the top. The flag is not on the other side over there. Now I see a couple sets of wires I see a couple sets of wires right here. So I'm wondering if... There's four wires going to that sensor. So, the other one is back there. It's difficult to get to. This wraps up my video for today. I did a little start on the troubleshooting and the next step is gonna be to take the Z axis, I think, and put it on the X and then see if that makes the X not fault. I did confirm mechanically, of course, that I don't have any binding going on. So that's the next step, but I'm gonna post this video. I'm hoping that one of my great followers uh, has some advice or can point me to somebody who's worked on one of these before, potentially a source for these servo motors. So I got the picture of it uh, right here at the end. And thanks for watching my video and please like and subscribe.